Hey everyone, it's Frozen Monica here. Now today I'm going to teach you how to customize gaming controllers like this Logitech F310 right here for use with Mac games. You know, you've got games like Call of Duty or other first person shooters, even games like Portal or basic games that don't really require many controls. You just don't like using the keyboard with them. But there's a piece of software that I'm going to teach you how to use today which can enable you to customize these gaming controllers and use them on your Mac. So, enough about explaining, let's get straight into it. Now this piece of software that I'm going to teach you to use is called Gamepad Companion. The link to buying it on the Mac App Store is in the description below. Now this is a very, very simple piece of software that you can use, which basically, as you can see, lists all your gamepads uh, to the left, and then shows all the button settings on the right. Now uh, to get this to work, first of all, I'm going to have to plug in my Logitech Gamepad, which I'm going to do right now, and hopefully the program should detect it. And there we are, Logitech Dual Action has been detected by the program. And uh, I've also got a shot here of my camera showing you my controller and how I'm going to configure this. So first of all, it lists all the buttons that are on the gamepad here. Now these don't really have any meaning when they just give the numbers, but as you press the buttons on the gamepad, um, the display will change as to which button you've pressed. So you'll easily be able to, um, to determine which of the buttons uh, you're actually pressing are. So that's pretty handy. Now I'll show you the button value, which is basically what you're going to set the button to, and then the button actions to specify the type of action you're going to set it to. So if I just set it back to button number one, which is the X button, um, I can set it to a single key on the keyboard, a key combination, uh, different mouse clicks, the different mouse movements, scroll wheel up, scroll wheel down, etc. I can do this for all the normal buttons as well. If I press the D-pad right here, which the program calls hat switch, um, I can set it to a combination of multiple keys, which means I have to map an up, down, left, and right for it. So if I just do the arrow keys right there, the hat switch works with the up, right, down, and left keys. Now for some controls, I can also change the sensitivity and the tracking speed. That's mainly used for things like mouse movements. So if I change it and move the X-axis, I can then set it to multiple keys if I want to do what I did with a hat switch, or I can change it to mouse movements. So if I set it to uh, mouse, say, right and left, if I wanted to move the mouse around uh, by doing that, I can then change the tracking speed of it if I want it to be really fast or if I want it to be really slow. And I can also do it the Y axis, the Z axis, and the Z rotation. It just works the exact same way. Now that I've explained the software, I'm just going to show you how it actually works. If I set button 1 up and I go to the single key, say I wanted button 1, the X button, to use the E button. Right there, the button value has shown up as E. And you can also change stuff like rapid fire, key repeat, and a steady aim if you're playing, as I said, a first person shooter and you don't want too much movement or you want some rapid fire. That's very handy as well. If I set the right trigger right here, button number 8, to be to also be a single key, or in fact, if I set it to be the left click of the mouse button, um, so whenever I pull that trigger, that'll act as a um, as a click on the mouse button. So you understand how this software works, and you can customize it to whatever you want. Pretty much all the keys on the keyboard work, so it's a very very handy thing to do. Now, the majority of Mac games that people play come off Steam, which is a client which is uh, produced by Valve, and they have a Steam mode button here in the software. Now this can be used um, if, you know, as it says, mouse events um, can be sent in different ways which works better from some games including those played on Steam. If you are playing a game on Steam um, with these configuration settings in Gamepad Companion, I would definitely recommend turning this on because it improves the overall gameplay experience and it also could improve how the controller actually works in the game. That's really enough about me explaining what everything does. If I now uh, very quickly set the uh, Y axis right here and change it to mouse up and down, and then I switch this on. You can now see that right here, if I move this joystick, the uh, the mouse is moving. So that's very, very, very cool. It works pretty much 100% of the time, I would say. And uh, for anyone looking into getting into gaming in this kind of way, uh, definitely check this piece of software out. It's very, very good. It goes for a cheap price of just £5.49. It's not too bad of a price, but then again, if you're not really willing to fork out a few quid to make your gameplay experience better, I would advise against it. But um, I've done a hell of a lot explaining about Gamepad Companion now, so I'm just going to demonstrate to you some of the games that I use Gamepad Companion for. Uh, uh. 
Blimey, that was a close call. There was an explosion and the roof fell on the drill rig. I'm okay, but Xander is hurt. He is pinned in the cockpit. I can't get him out. What's your position? I'm not it sure. begins in 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Thanks very much for watching this video guys, I hope you found it informative and I hope you learned something from it and I hope you enjoy using your gamepads now with your Mac games, seeing that, you know, it's a hell of a lot better than a keyboard, but anyway, that's the end of the video, make sure you subscribe to my channel, the subscribe button is right up there, and until my next video, whatever it may be, this is Fresmoticus saying, goodbye.